All right, now we've successfully installed Atom on our Mac machine, and we've installed the Atom Runner add-on, which will allow us to run our Ruby files from within the actual editor itself. So in this lesson, we'll create our very first Ruby file. We'll run it. We'll see how it operates within the context of Atom. And then in the next lesson, I'll take you to the terminal, and we'll see how we can execute that exact same file from our command line. So I'm going to begin by creating a new empty file. You can do that with the shortcut Command N and it's just gonna pop up this flashing white screen with a, with a cursor right here. If you forget any of these commands, by the way, you can always hover your mouse near the top to expose the Atom menu, and then under File, you can find some popular commands, and you can find New File right here, as well as the keyboard shortcut for basically executing that command. So a new file is Command N. And here, the first thing we need to do is actually save this file as a Ruby file. All Ruby files have the extension .rb. So the shortcut to save is Command S, much like it is in many other applications. And that's going to bring up, bring up this save prompt. Now for this course, I'm going to create a central Ruby folder on my desktop. Now you don't have to follow this design. You can create a folder wherever you'd like. Uh, but what I recommend is keeping all of your course files within a single folder. That will just make things like navigation and running your files as simple as possible. So here I'm already on my desktop. I'm just going to click New Folder and I'm gonna call the folder Ruby. Again, you can call your folder wherever, whatever you'd like. You can create it wherever, wherever you'd like. Um, the other thing that, that, that I'd recommend as you follow throughout the course is whenever you're saving your files, make sure to not include any spaces within them. The way that you can solve for spaces is by replacing each space with an underscore. So for example, in the future, if I have some kind of file like cool program, instead of simply saving it as coolprogram.rb, it's best to take this space in between the two words and replace it with an underscore. You can press shift plus that key that's to the right of the zero on your keyboard to get the underscore character. Uh, spaces are generally a big no-no. Spaces are much more likely to trigger errors whenever the terminal is looking at files. So a good practice is to start avoiding uh, having um, spaces within your file names. And the best practice among Ruby uh, people is simply to replace the spaces with underscores. All right, now as far as how you structure your files throughout the course, it's really up to you. The, the best recommendation I can give is to create a separate file for each section of the course at a minimum, and ideally a file for every single uh, lesson throughout the course. That way, as you proceed and follow along with the examples, you can save your work and keep it and always reference it later. But at the same time, uh, you don't have to. You can keep one file per section. You can keep one file for the entire course and simply overwrite it each and every every lesson. It depends how much you want to save your code. It depends what you want to preserve. It's really up to you. I'm leaving it up to you. Uh, in my case, I'm basically going to be creating a new file for every single lesson and giving it my own custom name. You don't have to follow the naming convention. Just keep in mind if you change your file name to something different, that's the file name that you're going to be looking for whenever you're looking for it, for example, in the terminal. So uh, keep track of that. For now, I'm in my central Ruby folder on my desktop, and I'm going to call this file example.rb. Again, .rb is the extension of the file, so basically this is what tells the interpreter that this is a valid Ruby file. Every file uh, on the system has some kind of extension. For example, Microsoft Word files have .docx, um, Excel files have .xlsx, uh, Markdown files, if you're familiar with those, have an extension of .md. Basically, this indicates what kind of file it is, and all Ruby files end with .rb, so we have to make sure to write that extension at the very end. And when I click Return to save this, you can see that up here on this tab, it's going to say example.rb. It's going to show the location when I hover my mouse over it. It's on my desktop in my Ruby folder, and we're ready to go ahead and start writing our actual Ruby code. So the code for this lesson will be very simple. I'm going to introduce a very popular uh, method, as it's called in Ruby. You can think of it as a command. It's something that does something, and it's, it's called puts. Uh, some people also pronounce it put s, and that s in put s stands for string. So a string in programming terms is basically a collection of characters, and characters can include everything from alphabetic characters that we see on our keyboard to characters like, let's say, the exclamation point or the question mark or, let's say, the asterisk. These are all valid characters. So a string is just a collection of characters together. It's text. That's the simplest way that I can describe it. And the way that we represent text within Ruby is within double quotes. So when I write a pair of double quotes here. As soon as I start my first one, Adam is automatically going to fill in my second one. And what put s does is output text to the screen, to whatever is going to be rendering the Ruby file. If we run it from within Adam, 
a text editor with Atom Runner, then Atom Runner is going to output this text. If we run this file in comparison from our terminal, then the terminal is going to output whatever we write here. So put s basically means put the string out there, output it to the screen, let it be visible. And then what we write within the double quotes is what it's actually going to output, the content, if you will. So let's begin with a very simple example. I'm just going to type hello world with a space in between those two. Hello World is a very famous tradition. It goes back all the way to the 1970s, actually. Basically, whenever a programmer is starting out with a new language, the first program they usually write is some kind of validation program that just confirms that the language is properly working, that it's configured, that it's responding to their commands. And the simplest type of program you can write is simply something like this that outputs text back to the user once they enter it. So this is just a test that Ruby is working. We're going to output the text Hello World back to us when we run this program. So what we can do here is save with command S, and then now it's time to run the file within Atom Text Editor. So we have to activate that Atom Runner package or library. The keyboard shortcut to do this is going to be Control R. So hold your Control key, press R, and you're going to see Atom Runner appear on the right. And here we have our output. On the top, it says Atom Runner. Here we have the name of the file that we're running. You can see it's example.rb, as is the case here. And here in, inside this white box is where we actually have our output. We can see that hello world appears. Two things to notice here. The first is that the double quotes do not appear, right? The double quotes are basically just kind of separators. They identify where the string begins and where the string ends. The double quotes themselves don't actually appear uh, within the actual output. They're just the, the starting point and the ending point of what will be output. And the other thing to notice is that the puts keyword itself does not appear here in the Atom Runner output. Puts is part of Ruby. It's something that outputs text. And that's the command. This is the command that we've given Ruby to output the text that we put in between our quotes here. And it's output that text. Puts itself is the command. But what we see here as the result of the execution is just the text itself. Below here, we have just a little bit of a status or a verification, if you will. It has running. We have the direct location of the file. You can see here it's on desktop Ruby example. We have a bunch of identification stuff, doesn't really matter. We have here exited with code equals zero. That basically means exited without any kind of mistakes. And then finally, the total number of seconds it took to actually run the file. Of course, because you're running this on a different computer, note, note that this number for you may be completely different. Your computer may run things faster or slower. In fact, if I re-execute this file again, if I just click back in here and do Control R again, you can see that this time it's going to be a lot faster, probably, probably because the first time it boots up uh, the Ruby uh, Atom Runner, it basically has to load up all the files and takes a little bit uh, longer. So now you can see it's getting down to a pretty small amount of time each time I execute. And as you can see here by my repeated execution, that's really the whole purpose of Atom Runner is that you can modify your file and then see the result automatically. So if instead of writing hello world, I just put an extra uh, character in here, for example, one, two, three. If I rerun this file again with control R, you can see that hello world one, two, three will pop up on Atom Runner. So we have immediate feedback. We get a response automatically and we can see how modifying our code is going to lead to a different result. That's what makes it so great for testing. All right. And as we can see here as well, numbers are totally fine as our characters. For example, I can put an exclamation point and the at symbol here. And when I execute with control R, that's going to output. Notice that control R also saves the file. So if I, let's say, remove this, go back to my original shape. You'll notice that this, uh, this thing in example.rb has this blue circle that appears right here. That blue circle means the file is not uh, saved. It hasn't been saved since some kind of change that you made. And when you run control R to run Atom Runner, you'll notice that will disappear because the file will automatically be saved in order for Atom Runner to run it. So that's really all there is to do in this lesson. We've written our very first Ruby code. It output the text hello world. The puts method as it's called or the put s method is followed by double quotes and what you want to print within those double quotes, what you want to output. So we did a couple examples here and now we've ended with this puts hello world file and we've practiced running it within Atom Runner. In the next lesson, we're going to go take this file and basically do the exact same thing. We're going to run it, but we're going to do it next time from our actual Mac terminal instead of from within our text editor. Some operations are simply not possible within Atom, so we'll have to jump to the command line to do them. So I'll take you through the process of doing that in the next lesson.